What's up guys, Foobs here, and we're back to another episode of r slash malicious compliance. Don't want to waste any time, want to get right in the stories? Just make sure you stick around to the very end for the bonus, and with that, I will see you in a bit. I can solve this bullying problem. Let me be clear, at no point did my kid assault another kid. A simple story, and it still makes me smile a couple years later. A little background. My ex is awesome. Her and I just were not meant for each other. She loves our son, but she hates confrontation. She also works for the school board, so she has to behave a certain way. I, on the other hand, have a tendency to scare people. I'm a large person, and since I work in the trades, I do not have to look or act in any way whatsoever. The story. My son, who had been taking Taekwondo for about four years at that time, was being bullied at school. He did the right thing and told the teacher. I guess the bully was her relative in some way, because she told my son not to be a little tattletale. My son once again did the right thing and told his mother, who he lives with. I work in an oil field, so I'm not always in the city. She decided not to follow up because she didn't want to stir the pot at work. My son called me and told me what happened. I talked to his mom and verified the story. I asked her why she hadn't done anything about the problem. And she said that if I really cared, I would do something. You want me to take care of this? Okay. Cue the malicious compliance. I made an appointment with the principal for my next week off. Myself and my son met with the principal and the teacher in question. I explained the situation and asked what was to be done. The principal said that this was the first time he was hearing about it, but the teacher claimed that it did not happen. I then turned to my son and said, the next time that kid bullies you, I give you permission to punch him in the throat. The principal and teacher both looked at me like I was about to kill them. The principal said, you can't say that. I asked, are you sure? Let me try again and find out. Hey boy, the next time that kid bullies you, you have my permission to punch him in the throat. Holy crap, you were wrong. I totally can say that. The bullying stopped. Encourage me to make my own decisions? Okay, bye. So, for a little bit of pre-context, I used to go to the Mormon church every Sunday. My mom is super religious. Well, I am not. For whatever reason, Mormon church make teenagers attend seminary and young men's. Seminary is an hour lesson every morning before school, which is stupid, and young men's is an event every Wednesday night or other day depending on the activity. Basically, I had to go to the seminary and young men's event because of my mom. There's a bunch of things I disagree with that the church does and I'm mentally not in the church anymore. Quick example, if they take 10% of income as tithing, which is, again, stupid, point is, they also take up a lot of your free time, demanding you contribute and invading your personal space if you refuse. I was tasked with a project in seminary and organizing three events for young men's. Honestly, I planned a hiking trip and cross-country skiing and whatnot. When I got really busy with school, I stopped going to seminary as I wanted an extra hour of sleep. Guess what? The church pestered me and harassed me for not going to seminary. Oh, it's so important. Like hell it's important. Blah, blah, blah. I didn't go to seminary and they continued to harass me. Come time, they start encouraging us to use our agency. They made a whole three hour long service talking about agency and the importance of it. Agency, to my understanding, is the ability for an individual to make one's own decision to find out the truth. They started saying this as a motivator to be more active in the church and find stories to prove the church to be true. But I did the opposite. Cue malicious compliance. So instead of researching about why the church is true, I found out about why it's a whole goddamn corporate lie for money, basically. I used my agency to find the real truth about the church. For my seminary project, I made a whole presentation about the negative aspects of the church 
and why we need to be more careful about what's happening. R slash ex-Mormon, I thank you. I talked about Joseph Smith and his 30-something teenage wives, the hypocrisy in the church, and the amount of suicides and whatnot that came of the church. Then, I left. They didn't have anything else planned for young men's. They invaded my house to try and get me to go back. They gave me calls to bring me back. It was pretty simple what I would say. I'm utilizing my agency. Please respect that. They didn't have young men's for a month because I wasn't there to organize anything else. Not only that, my presentation also encouraged other people, some of my acquaintances, to stop going to the church too. It may not seem like a big deal, but this is a big church and bringing it down as much as I can brings me joy especially after all the pain it's caused me. I'm glad to say that I've gotten my hour of sleep back, and now my Sunday is free for watching Endgame. Per page quote for medical reports. Background. I manage a medical office, and we get requests for medical reports all the time from various places. Insurance companies and law firms mostly. Our local laws allow us to charge 75 cents a page for the first 25 pages. 50 cents per page for pages 26 to 75, and 25 cents per page for every additional page. Our office's general policy is to charge between a $10 minimum and $30 maximum range. We never charge the patients themselves, and capping the fee at $30 means we're providing anything over 48 pages for free. Begin scene. A paralegal, call her Tammy, at a large law firm faxes us a request for all previous records for a long-time patient who is signing up for a new life insurance policy. I look at the patient's chart, see that there are easily 100 plus encounters, two to three pages each, 50 plus pages of lab results, countless specialist notes, etc. In less than 10 seconds, I can see that we're going to be sending more than 48 pages, and I won't need to calculate a per page quote. I generate a bill for our maximum fee of $30 and send it back to the paralegal. Five minutes later, Tammy calls. She is extremely upset that I did not include per page quote with my bill and loudly demands to talk to my manager. I am the manager, I say, and send her a bill for $30 because that's our standard maximum fee for records. I think she ignored the maximum part of the statement as she said it was illegal to not provide a per page quote for the records and demand I send her a new invoice. If I didn't, she was going to report us to some type of legal bureau and have us investigated for fraud or some similar nonsense. Again, I told her that I reviewed her request, reviewed the patient's extensive records, and it was our policy to just cap the total at $30, so I didn't think a per page quote was necessary. Tammy screamed, Do your damn job before I sue your ass! Loud enough that my coworker could hear her through my phone. I said, Okay. I generated a new bill for 475 pages of records, or $139.25, and sent it to her with the page count totals included. She called back, much quieter this time. Tammy, we didn't realize this patient had so many records. Can we pay the original invoice of $30? Me. Sorry, you requested a per page quote. Just doing my job. Tammy. Click. We get a check for $139.25 the next week. And I never heard from her again. Take one entitled parent, add a dash of malicious compliance, and a sprinkle of petty revenge. Mmm, it's delicious. Just to start this, hurting a child to get revenge on the other parent is a horrible thing to do. Too often, people forget that the child is the most innocent person when parents split up. Do not take your hate for them out on your kid. That being said, no child was harmed in the making of this story. Now, that's out of the way. Let's move on to the story, shall we? My ex is the very definition of an entitled person. She fakes a disability to get a check, has never worked a day in her life, and has always expected everything in life handed to her. Now, all that being said, I hold none of that against my son. 
It isn't his fault that I stuck it in crazy. Additional life lesson, don't stick your pecker in crazy. And for you ladies, don't let crazy stick it in you. When our son was born, her bubble of spoiled rotten extended out to him. For a while, I didn't blame her. She wasn't even supposed to be able to carry a child to term. And I wasn't supposed to be a father anymore. I had a vasectomy after my third son was born. So yeah, got this one tested and... Yes, he is mine, but as always happens with entitled people, it was never enough, and eventually we split. Now, I pay a healthy amount in child support, more than the courts would actually order, and I pay on time, every time. It's enough that even after food, clothes, and other expenses, she still has plenty left over to spoil him, even if it's not up to her wants. Recently, she began to complain about the fact that when I buy him presents, they always stay with me. I have him three days a week, but she wants his entire toy stash to go back to her house during her four days. I refuse. She continues to complain, and I fume about it to my new wife. And the plan starts brewing. I agreed that from now on, I would send half of what I got him for holidays to her house and it could all stay there. She was so proud of herself. Easter was coming. I had already bought my normal bounty, mostly consisting of outside toys. I had water guns, balls, bats, a giant outdoor bowling set, and a liberal sprinkling of candy. I went shopping again, this time with my wife. No outdoor toys this time, knowing she would not take him out to play with them. No, this time I went a route that would suit her musical and artistic child. He loves playing outside in the dirt, by the way. She just can't keep up with him when he does. I went musical, loud and as obnoxious as I could find. A recorder, a noisemaker, laser guns that made dozens of different sounds, and enough candy to put a bull moose into a diabetic coma. Enough to equal the dollar amount I spent on his original basket. Every bit of that went home with him after he had a nice long day of running around outside, happy as a clam. She of course was thrilled seeing the volume. Her little prince was getting a quadruple Easter. My parents also gave him a basket. Hours later, I was informed she didn't want me sending things home if that was the kind of toys I was going to bring him. He was running around the house screeching through the recorder, powered by a combination of chocolate and pixie sticks. He absolutely loves a recorder. It's not so bad when you let him play with it outside. TLDR. Entitled mom gets exactly what she asked for. Gin style. Wishes she had chose her words more carefully. Alright guys, now let's head on over to the bonus, which today is going to be r slash facepalm. Let's do it. What the f***ing hell? Why is bare skin condoms a thing? Why would you want a condom made out of bare skin? Isn't that mother f***ing animal cruelty? I have been informed that it is bare skin condoms. I am so sorry. How did you really think that works? Do you think like lumberjacks are out there somewhere fist fighting bears just for our sexual needs? As cool as that may sound. There's no better way to get in shape than prepare for a triathlon. This guy will tell you. I'm that guy. And no, I won't tell you that. This wasn't even a bad misquote, and still they can't just go out and ask them. Come on, people. Stop with the false media. All aboard the Flat Earth Cruise. Just don't tell them about nautical navigation. Flat Earthers who believe the Earth is a large disk may be shocked to find the ship's navigation is based on a spherical planet. I really do wish they would use a Flat Earth navigation model. That would be great. Alright, and according to our navigation, if you look out to your left, you should see the beautiful blue Atlantic Ocean. When your hair is more important than your laptop. Hey man, I've heard of what those salons can charge, that actually might just be more expensive. The elders of this church wanted to design the Church League softball shirts. They thought CLI, Christian Life International, alone wouldn't signify a church, so they added the cross. Magnificent. I'll be honest, initially I just scrolled down and I thought that said cult. 
which to be fair, is pretty damn hilarious on its own. And then I realize what it actually says, and mmm, mmm, so much sweeter. Woman who got an eyeball tattoo may lose her eye. Now she's warning others. No need to warn me, I'm not an idiot. Wait, wait, you can lose an eye from that? Well, there goes my Saturday. <laughs> Alright guys, that's gonna wrap it up for the day. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I will see you again in the next one. Peace out. And crapping the fee at crapping. <laughs> Oops.